Good morning and welcome to this short service provided by St Cuthbert's Amble. Our church is open again now for nearly all our normal activities and we do welcome you if you're able to come. But we recognise that for many of you it's not possible to be with us either due to distance or due to having to stay indoors. So welcome to this service. We try to make this service uh, a part of what we do on a Sunday morning by using the same readings as we have on Sundays. And uh, Jill is going to read to us uh, a very familiar passage in a few minutes. But before that, some prayers. Loving Lord Jesus, you long to touch lives of both young and old today as you did when you walked on earth. May we spend this time feeling you near, thinking about how you want us to walk with you in our daily lives. We know that often we fail to live up to our own standards, let alone your will for our lives. As we feel your forgiveness now, may we walk on, following your example and living the life you have for us. Give us your Holy Spirit to help us day by day. Amen. Jesus made his way to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which some these days called the Sea of Tiberias. As Jesus walked, a large crowd pursued him hoping to see new signs and miracles. His healings of the sick and lame were garnering great attention. Jesus went up a mountain and found a place to sit down and teach. His disciples gathered around. The celebration of the Passover, one of the principal Jewish feasts, would take place soon. But when Jesus looked up, he could see an immense crowd coming toward him. Jesus approached Philip. Where is a place to buy bread so that these people may eat? Jesus knew what he was planning to do, but he asked Philip nonetheless. He had something to teach, and it started with a test. Philip said, I could work for more than half a year and still not have the money to buy enough bread to give each person a very small piece. Andrew, the disciple who was Simon Peter's brother, spoke up and said, I met a young boy in the crowd carrying five barley loaves and two fish, but that is practically useless in feeding a crowd this large. Jesus said, tell the people to sit down. They all sat together on a large grassy area. Those counting the people reported approximately 5,000 men, not including the women and children sitting in the crowd. Jesus picked up the bread gave thanks to God and passed it to everyone. He repeated this ritual with the fish. Men, women and children all ate until their hearts were content. When the people had all they could eat, he told the disciples to gather the leftovers. Jesus said, go and collect the leftovers so we are not wasteful. They filled 12 baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves after witnessing this sign that Jesus did, the people stirred in conversation, saying, This man must be the prophet God said was coming into the world. Jesus sensed the people were planning to mount a revolution against Israel's Roman occupiers and make him king. So he withdrew further up the mountain by himself. That's a very familiar story, isn't it? And we're introduced to a number of characters. Have you noticed, uh, maybe if you've been on a bus or a train or walking through the street, you pass someone very briefly, you may even have a word with them, and then you move on and their life goes on and your life goes on and that moment kind of passes and you know no more about them and you didn't know where they came from maybe and you don't know where they're going. It's a bit like that with the boy in the story that we've just heard. There's a boy here, one of the versions of the Bible says that's all you get. 
but you have to ask yourself, well, I had to anyway, because I'm a bit curious about people. Why was he there? Why was he carrying this food? Was it his lunch? Uh, or was he maybe, even at that young age, a delivery boy? Taking food to somebody else? A sort of early pizza delivery person? Or was he just doing something else with it? Well, was he on, on his own? Or was he with other people? Were his family there? Did they know where he was? And why was he in a big crowd of people who were following Jesus and listening to what he had to say? It's all right saying there is a boy here, but why? <laughs> I don't expect we'll ever know, really. Uh, but I got curious about it and I like a backstory to people. But how about, as well as a backstory for this boy, how about a story of him going on? Growing up, we do hope, and uh, becoming a man with this story in his background, this happening to him in his background. Would he go around telling people about it? I was the boy who took the loaves and fishes that Jesus fed 5,000 people with. That was when I was little. Or would he keep it to himself? I can't really imagine anybody keeping this to themselves. And uh, what happened to him as far as his belief in following Jesus? If you've been there and seen this and met Jesus, had listened to his teaching, surely you have to say to yourself, surely this boy would want as he grew up to follow Jesus and to become uh, one perhaps of a member of the early church. But again, we don't know. We don't know the impact that, that Jesus had on that young life as he experienced Jesus' teaching and Jesus' actions and most of all Jesus' own presence with him. Because at that impressionable age, uh, people tend to look for heroes. We never had any doubt in our family who my father's hero was. Right from the very beginning I'd known and everybody in the family knew who my father's hero was. When my father was a teenager, living in Bridlington, he and his pals would spend a lot of their time down by the harbour because of their interest in boats. And at that time, the RAF were uh, experimenting down there with uh, the very early inshore rescue boats. And there was a company of RAF personnel down there, including a leading aircraftman. But this leading aircraftman was actually in disguise. He wasn't leading aircraftman Shaw at all. In fact, he'd been a diplomat, a soldier, a leader of the Arab rebellion. He'd been an archeologist. He was a historian and writer. He was a person interested in cultures other than his own. In fact, that leading aircraftman was really Lawrence of Arabia, the famous uh, leader of the Arab revolt. And uh, he was in disguise because he had become um, tired of fame and wanted a bit of peace. But my father must have sussed out who he was because for the whole of my father's life, uh, this man was his hero. He followed him by reading his books and taking in his ideas, especially about respecting other cultures. And he traveled even to some of the places where Lawrence had been. He was a hero, a lifelong hero of, of his. And so I guess that uh, this boy that we're thinking about must have followed his hero. We'll never know. But Jesus was his hero. Do you know that there are a lot of days, and I mean that with a capital D, days in every year, when people remember special things. And if you look them up, there's all sorts of weird days. There's an International Armadillo Day. There's International Toilet Day, which we've just had this week. 
Um, there's also, I'm sure a lot of my colleagues would be glad to hear, there's also International Buy a Priest a Pint of Beer Day. <laughs> These are all very modern things, as you can tell. But the church has been celebrating special days for quite a long time. And today, uh, we call this special day the Day of Christ the King. So it's appropriate that we've looked at this boy and seen how he followed perhaps his hero and, uh, and what a difference it might have made to his life as we apply it to ourselves and say to ourselves, is Christ the King in our life? Is he the one we follow? Is he the one we want to, to copy? Is he the one we want to be with? Is today the day that Christ is your king? Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our prayer today is for all those in positions of authority. Bless them with wisdom, a spirit of service to others, and concern for the good of all those under their charge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, teacher and guide, our prayer today is for all children and young people. We ask that you will give to them loving and caring teachers, influencers and mentors who will guide and shape their young lives for good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, friend and companion of all in trouble, those who suffer sickness or distress. Our prayer today is for all who need your help, as we name those we know and need your presence 
in their pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, who felt your own pain at the loss of a friend, our prayer today is for all who mourn. Draw close with your arms of love, comfort and bless them. Be close to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our prayer today is for ourselves. May we take you as King and Lord of our lives and follow you day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the Lord give you, for every storm, a rainbow. For every tear, a smile. For every care, a promise and a blessing in each trial. For every problem life sends, a faithful friend to share. For every sigh, a sweet song and an answer for each prayer. In the name of Jesus the King. Amen. <laughs> 